Just like the most powerful engine in any car, the brain needs to be fueled constantly. Of course, it is not petrol that the brain needs, but blood, and lots of it. Around a quarter of all blood at any one time. This essential blood supply is provided through a fantastically efficient network of arteries that responds immediately to any increase in demand. However, just as a car will come to a halt without the necessary fuel, so does the brain. Stop the blood supply to the brain for even a few minutes and the brain cells die. But why does the blood flow stop? Think of your brain arteries as a series of pipes, just like an irrigation system for a field. Now, if any of these pipes in the irrigation system has a blockage, say for example by a stone, then one part of the field won't receive any water and the plants will die. Or perhaps a pipe splits and water leaks out, flooding a part of the field where another part remains dry, affecting plants in both areas. This is exactly what happens in the disease stroke where brain arteries either become blocked by blood clots or rupture, leading to hemorrhage. Brain cells that need the blood fail to get enough and die. This means part of the brain can no longer work and the behaviour of the patient is affected. Sometimes they are unable to move their arm and other times they cannot speak. In severe cases, the stroke causes damage to so many brain cells or parts of the brain critical for life that unfortunately the patient dies. At present, Stroke is the second leading cause of death across the whole world. So what can we do about stroke to prevent people dying or being left disabled? Well, we could open up the blood vessels if blocked, allowing blood to flow again, just like one could remove the stone from the irrigation system. This is done using drugs to dissolve the clot or a device to pull it out. This does have some benefit to a few patients, but not nearly all. We therefore need new treatments. Your immune system helps to fight off infection Yet some of the proteins released from white blood cells that help kill the bugs appear not to be so good in the brain. They are produced after stroke and damaged brain cells. So will stopping immune substances, specifically a protein called interleukin-1, reduce the effects of stroke? Well, using animal models of stroke it appears so. Blocking IL-1 from having an effect through a drug called interleukin-1 receptor antagonist, or IL-1 RA, reduces the number of dead brain cells in rats and mice who have stroke induced and also improves their functional recovery. Can it do the same in humans? Early stage clinical trials suggest it might, offering real hope that we have a new treatment for stroke, which is widely available. Confirmation of this will hopefully come from large clinical studies in the near future. Excitingly, most of this work on interleukin-1 receptor antagonists has been carried out here at the University of Manchester. My name is Professor Stuart Allen. I'm Professor of Neuroscience in the Faculty of Life Sciences at the University of Manchester.